Good morning. I wanted to jump around and take a look at a couple different things that were new in, in photo and video these days. And, of course, go to the, the best site in the industry here. See what's going on at bhphotovideo.com here. Always have a deal of the day at the top here. It's always fun to click on these and and see what time of the day it it ends. And they also have a lot of different things you can click on in here. But of course, be sure to consider your closest local camera shop and electronics provider. I guess the we're now up to six terabyte. It had been four terabyte. Then it was two terabyte and you always think of if if the highest capacity one in in a single drive is the best is the best way to go and i think i had 1.5 terabytes for a while now i've i've got all two terabyte drives in the in the computers that i have but i never went to four and then when you look at six here so that looks like the the highest capacity now one thing i like to look at is just take a look at camcorders here. I haven't been on the site in a month. Uh, previously, I I had frequented the site probably probably once an hour, if not if not more than that for a long time. But the Sony camcorders are always interesting here that have the that have a projector uh, built in. It's not super bright, um, but it is cool. You can see right here if you have it in a in a dark situation and of course all the advertising for these cameras are are like people camping in their backyard and and things like that so i clicked on best sellers right here so the vixia line has always been popular uh from canon uh with their hf40 uh they put that the cmos sensor that this is not exactly the full 1080 sensor right here and the hf 40 was the first one to have it. So the sensor you're looking for is the HD CMOS Pro sensor, and that's the one that's 1080. Uh, so if you look at this camera right, this camera right here, this is the same chip, the same sensor that's in the, the XA10. It was super popular about three, four years ago, and then on into the future. But I said I was going to look at what's new in photo and video, so a good way to do that is to click on over here. There used to be a tab that was called new. So I don't see that right now, but I'm gonna look around and see if I can find it here. It says bestsellers, top rated. Let me see if, if it's on another tab. So there should be one along here. What's this, under, under pro video? Is that where the, no, I think it's gonna be under photography. Let's take a look at a different tab and see if it comes up here. Okay, let's try digital digital cameras here. And we can sort by new releases. Here's what I was looking for. Yeah. So if we take a look here, it looks like Sony has, has updated the A7R. So A7R, when it was released, was 36 megapixel. And that was what folks were going for who architectural photography or looking for that high megapixel count and it looks like it's been been redone and added the the stabilization of the sensor so that's the same thing that was done on the a7 type 2 which has been shipping for a little while so it looks like a fourth installment here of the of the rx of the rx10 so that's got the it's got the one inch one inch sensor in it and it's got a built-in lens and you don't want to be trying to to swap out that lens so Canon started shipping their the 5DS, 5DR, and this is where they got got that high megapixel count because before you'd had probably something like you know 21 or 28 megapixel was the max that you had, and then we see Sony bringing out these numbers that are you know coming up around medium medium format camera uh, style megapixels. But the implication for for shooting video on these cameras is kind of what what are you going to be doing more of? Are you going to be doing more photo or are you going to be doing more, more video on the camera? Like is always a camera that's, you know, hewn from a, a chunk of brass and nobody can afford it. And so that's what we see here. I mean, the, the first time I heard about Leica lenses was the Leica M's adapting over to, to micro four thirds for uh, GH2. So not a whole lot 
Nikon still in the game. I don't know if you remember some of the some of the the actor that was um, uh, working with them uh, for a while that was kind of shamed, but then bounced back. So Olympus, there, all the Olympus ringers are called trailblazers. Uh, so what I mean by a trailblazer is someone who uses Olympus cameras and goes out and shoots awesome photos. So it's good to see that they're uh, continuing that line. I think it was the TG3 that was the before. RX-10 has always been an interesting camera. Build-in lens had that has that one inch sensor, and you can have your aperture uh, be clickless be, or be be stepless on it. <laughs> this series of Lumix right here always kind of made me scratch my head when when I worked at a camera shop. It, I looked at getting these cameras in, the series of camera in, and then the accessories for it, and then they popped up at Costco uh, at a very, very, very inexpensive price. So I thought that was going to be a good one to to stock as a dealer, but. But turns out that, that that was not the case at that price point. Uh, but this is what I mentioned before here. Um, the A7 Type 2 put that stabilization. So it looks like uh, this technology has kind of been yanked from Olympus because Olympus cameras have Sony sensors and had that 5-axis for a long time now. Olympus has been has been pushing the stabilization for years now, but one thing that I think Sony didn't let them do uh, was put anything other than, than interlaced video on their cameras, so the OMD and all those. Fuji's, Fuji's got a lot that they're doing. They have their IS Mini LUT box, and there's Fuji Film and, and Fuji Non, and... It's another set of mirrorless lenses to buy. I think I'm pretty sure you. I'm pretty sure you can adapt uh, Nikon lenses over to it. But don't know if Metabones or any of our friends on the other side of the globe decided to kick down that fence and let you use EF uh, lenses on these or not. The mirrorless cameras from Sony have been huge. I was talking to somebody yesterday who's putting up a, a NEX 5R on a helicopter, and with that low weight. Um, and with them being light, these have always been great cameras here. That 16 to 50 kit. Nikon, I've never had the, never had the pleasure in, in my life to be a dealer for. I mean, I've known people who have shot Nikon, and what I've heard is, is people who are serious about about photo tend towards the Nikon cameras over over Canon. Uh, but in terms of experiencing my, that myself, I had a had a Nikon DSLR beater that I would uh, use occasionally, and it was pretty neat the way you could adjust uh, what the JPEG uh, settings were and to, to actually make proxies on the camera to the card without a computer. I thought that was something neat that Nikon does, and maybe some of the Canon cameras are doing that at this point. Who knows? Um, so it looks like, it looks like, Lumix is up to a G7 here, so not to be confused with any GH7 because that would skip the GH5, GH6, and uh, jump straight to the seven. So the the Lumix cameras that don't have the H in the part number here have always been somewhat limited in terms of the video that they do. But I think in terms of in terms of photo, this is this looks pretty neat here. So you have a a 14 to 42. And I'm guessing that this lens is built in here. Um, who knows? Uh, maybe it's not. Classic look here on that Fuji film. See the silver up here. And just skip down a little bit further here in terms of what's going on with cameras. Pentax K. Yeah, so you can adapt. You can adapt your, your Nikon over, or, a, or actually you can adapt your Pentax over to, to Micro Four Thirds. So that's the the K style uh, lens here. Um, some people say that when you when you get into different colors, that means means your time is up, your time has come. So everybody remembers all the dad and grad specials on the on the T6i uh, last month. I'm recording this here at the end of at the end of June. So let's jump over and see what's new in new in lens technology. Again, this is the best website to use in the industry here to look at things. But of course, uh, make your purchase at your closest available equipment provider. Let's look at what's new in mirrorless here. So full frame E-mount has always been fun because when full frame E-mount came out, it's like I didn't know there was non full frame E-mount. So that's of course what's being used on A7 series cameras. So I'm gonna go down again here to 
to new releases and see if it's old wine and new bottles or anything that is um, new and outstanding. So Battis, always fun to have different names from Zeiss. You have Battis, and before there was Otis and and many other lenses kind of in that series. And Zeiss has always been kind of superior optics, and it's been kind of fun for people who had gotten used to the used to the Canon 50 1.2, the 85, I think it was an 85 1.2 and and that series is 16 to 35, 24 to 70. So if you've gotten kind of bored with the look of those lenses and with, with using those lenses and you just want something physically different with a little bit of a different look and feel, I'm not saying jump over to full frame E, but consider at least um, the, the FE series, um, not the FE series, the uh, EF um, Zeiss lenses. So I think they call them the, the Z E. So here we go. Some full frame, uh, something like this. If it's got some stabilization, it'd probably be, probably be fun to fly. Who knows? Well, no, the stabilization, the stabilizations on the sensor. Um, so that's not as much of a, a much of a non-starter, uh, that is having lenses that don't have image stabilization for putting on drones because now with the stabilization on the sensor you don't have to have a, a stabilized lens so here's something with a lot of reach full frame e this is going to be something like like we were used to with the 18 to 200 uh, that we had seen before on a lot of the the kit lenses used on fs100 fs700 uh, nex ea50 so those cameras are using something with a range kind of like that getting into some macro here. So FE really seems to be what's, what's taken off here. And as we mentioned Fujifilm before with her X mount, uh, here's something great in terms of being a, a rectilinear uh, lens. So this is going to be something that's wide angle. You see that 7 to 14 here, of course, used on micro four thirds. So this is going to be uh, GH4. If there's any AF100 uh, people in the crowd out there, then that's what that would be used for. These are some more inexpensive uh, Lumix lenses. There is a, a 42.5 uh, F, I think it's, a, it's either 1.2 or 1.4, but the price of it is about four times what the price of this is. So here's another great Zeiss uh, name here, uh, Loxy. I don't even know how to say that. It's like it's like you look at all this stuff on the on the internet all day long, but until you get your hands on it or go to a trade show or your local camera shop, uh, you'll be able to hear what the vernacular uh, is for saying that. Voigtlander, of course, everybody knows the the twenty five f point nine five micro four thirds that you know you'd set your GH two to you know sixty four hundred ISO and you'd be able to find your your shoes in the closet using it. That's what that, and, and so some more inexpensive lenses here uh, on the Lumix side. So uh, the Lumix X, as an X-ray series lenses, they had the, the 12 to 35 and 35 to 100, and they were all F2.8 continuous, and they both had, I believe it was like a 57 or 62 on the filter diameter, um, but these are going to be much less expensive, so they're not going to be as fast as that X series, and they're also not in the X series, so I doubt it's the same build quality. But you'll definitely want to use the hashtag uh, Lumix Lounge to learn a little bit more about that. Lens baby, taking bad photos on purpose, creative depth of field and focus. Always interesting seeing um, what what they're working on and doing. So of course you want to get the Lens baby PL set if you have the AJA Scion camera, right? So here's some more in Micro Four Thirds. So blah blah blah. Let's go to the forums and let's see what everybody is. Uh, let's see what everybody's arguing about. Let's go to DV Info uh, first here. And the cool thing about uh, my two favorite forums, DV Info and DVX User, are are both forums where people are discussing all of this equipment that we're talking here. So FC1000, uh, this is a great camera that is from Panasonic, shoots 4K or shoots 1080. And of course, people are automatically talking about, you know, Adorama and buying stuff online and not going to their closest local camera shop, whether it whether it's a Jessup's in the UK or I don't know what all's in Decatur, Alabama at this point here. Um, but 
what folks are talking about is the the built-in lens on that FC 1000. So it's an $800 camera. Uh, it's got a one-inch sensor. It takes 20 megapixel stills. So this is a great place to to just kind of check in, create a profile, and and talk about talk about these cameras. Then here it is uh, about how much the record time is. Uh, it does reset to 29 minutes. Um, and people talk about when to actually you know stop the camera. So that. That's an interesting camera. Um, I think it's the DMC FC 1000 talking about what to actually uh, uh, set it to here. So a lot of people talking about that. And RX10, we talked about that. It's the it's got a build-in lens and it's got the clickless uh, or stepless aperture. Um, it looks like X70 may have gotten a 4K turned on. Um, so uh, the PMW X70 is a one is a one chip camera from Sony that's got HDSDI out. Uh, last time I checked, uh, the X70 was selling for, it was selling for about $2,000. Um, let's take a look here and see what, uh, so the X70 right here. So this camera was so exciting when it came out because it's got image stabilization, it's got a built-in lens, records to, I think it records to SDHC cards. Um, it's got the XAVC codex of 50 megabit per second built in, and then it's got that HDSDI out, which is a locking connector, which is great to run to a switcher or to run to image, um, uh, like image magnification, like iMag or something like that. So here's a planned upgrade to 4K. So if we jump back over here, so this is like yesterday. So this is pretty good news. Um, View it on a 4K monitor. I saw no more or aliasing. What are the black bars around the background? So it looks like it was cropped weird in terms of, in terms of aliasing or more. It's like, what's the sensor readout? You know, is it full? Is it the, the full sensor that's being read or how exactly is it getting to that? So when you get to YouTube and you want to watch this clip here in 4K, go to the settings and you can see all the way up here, it says that 2160. Um, so the reason for the boxes, so to, to answer this question down here, is this, the answer may be that it says is a planned upgrade to UHD, which UHD is 3860 um, by 2160, whereas this up here may be trying to do that 4096 by 2160. So just Google UHD and Google DCI, and you may see some things um, uh, come up in terms of what exactly that means. Moving on down the road, again, the camera is the X70. And call over to your local camera shop, see if they have one there. And then, of course, of course, consider if there's a tax exemption for whatever state you're in uh, for exemption. Because as you know, every local camera shop is not a showroom for B&H or a showroom for Amazon or anything else out there. So the PMW X200, I'm trying to remember how this whole series uh, came about on these cameras. The the legacy of, of 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 Sony has been the EX1, then the EX3, then the PMW 200, and then PMW 300, and then the X200. The cool thing about it is it's got XAVC, so it's got 50 megabit per second. There's a cool proxy mode on this camera, so what that means is you can jam uh, a 32 gig max, don't put a 64 in it, um, SDHC card, not an SDXC card. And you can throw that card in there and record proxy on it, um, but then also record to higher quality. Maybe there's supposed to be audio right here. Um, I've got no idea um, why this video is. Okay, so here's what you see. Three half inch sensors on the X200, which leaves it at, I think, a, two, a 20X uh, zoom. Up here, you can see Omega Broadcast in Austin, Texas sells red cameras. Good to know. Good local dealer. Again, selling products that people are using on the higher end. It, it, it's red. There's also the PMW X, I think it's called the 160. And it's got third inch sensors, so it's a little bit smaller uh, sensor. But what that allows you to do is to get up to like a 20x zoom. So let me pause this right here. So you can see some of these numbers here, the HD 42250. And then, of course, somebody's doing stuff in PAL here because maybe they're in, I don't know, Brazil talking about this, this camera here. So 
finally finished uh, the, the pros and cons review. So this guy's not too far behind the schedule here, Rob, in terms of getting this information out. The camera's been out for a while. Um, but not necessarily a bad time to 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 do a review and to to talk about it more. So here's somebody. This so Jack thinks the camera's rushed. They basically went and ported the BMW 200 firmware to use with new XAVC format. Except for my name's Jack, and I forget that you can't actually do proxy on the BMW 200. So there's features I'm not even mentioning here, and I want global shutter. So. It's good to see the different uh, people come out with different per perspectives, which are fantastic. So um, BCU1, it looks like right here, they're chasing down uh, what the actual power supply is that comes with the camera. And I think for a little while, you probably had to charge the batteries on the camera itself. But if you've got the, you've got to look to see if it's the MPF L series batteries or if it's the, the BP series. So some people think Vegas is dead, but Ryan Layart is still editing video on Vegas, which is okay. Um, this guy, just all his stuff just got deleted. Um, so check it out here. So my posts are missing. Um, came here to discuss a problem. And Mr. Gary Huff of Austin, Texas, why are you trying to post in threads that are old or not about the issues you were having in the first place? Is there a reason why you cannot start a new thread that directly pertains to your issue straight into the point? like it. And I think Chris Hurd weighs in here. Um, and Chris is actually the founder of DV Info and puts in a, in a response here. So, so talking about keeping things current, but you can always get to this website again, dvinfo.net uh, and click on today's posts. And what you can see from there is just to start from the top of the pile, kind of what the discussion is. Um, then over here, what you'll see is uh, I mentioned the EA 50 uh, earlier, you'll see kind of uh, uh, themes, uh, uh, how the forum is is divided up in terms of what people are talking about. Um, so for sale, continental US, somebody's getting out of their 5D3 right here. Um, great website. Uh, so let's jump over to the uh, second, uh, second website here, DVX user. Um, unfortunate name uh, for a forum because the DVX100 has been discontinued for a little while now, um, but you can still click on. Today's posts. So on today's post here, we have somebody, FS700, filming a subject against an LED wall at a corporate event. So of course, the answer is you get the people running the corporate event to set the refresh rate of the LED wall to something that fits in with the scan rate of your camera, right? Right, Roy RS Films. Does anybody have experience with this? I was filming a corporate event using an EX3 and an FS. <sighs> Were the settings the same on both cameras? Hi. Yes. Settings exactly the same on both cameras. I, and I don't know what this is. 720, 50p, 3.6k. Oh, okay, that's the. Um, this is going to be the uh, color temperature, uh, the uh, white balance. Um, so I don't know if that if trying to shoot 720p as opposed to 1080. Um, yeah, so colors reproduced correctly, and yeah. So somebody's saying substantial desaturation, is the exposure set to auto. Yeah, don't set your exposure to auto. But nobody is talking about uh, the refresh rate, but. Um, so it could have been the fact, let me see here, uh, pointing both cameras, all colors for recording perfectly fine. Hmm. So this is a great way to kind of talk out um, um, what's happening and see if other users around the world have had any issues. So here we go. We're just going to bring Vlog back from the dead on the GH4. So nobody knows quite why there wasn't Vlog added to the GH4. So what the question is asking here, um, the DMC GH4 is a mirrorless micro four thirds camera uh, from Panasonic and your options for shooting on cameras are to shoot with the codec on it. So ABC HD or XAVC or, or whatever the codec is, or some cameras have log. And what log is gonna do is it's a logarithmic curve that basically sets the codec and the color matrix to get the maximum dynamic range and resolution out of the sensor. And it's made specifically for cameras. And what you may be thinking is, well, I just shoot raw on the red, I just shoot raw on black magic. That's great. That's the next step 
in the in the in the amount of compression and dynamic range and quality that you're going to get out of a camera. So GH4 can do 100 megabit per second at the variable bit, and it can also do constant 200 megabit per second. So 200 is twice what you can do on a P2 card, uh, which is 100 on all of the Panasonic quote unquote broadcast uh, cameras, but on this DSLR. But the question is, is it going to have V-Log because Panasonic's, what's the big camera called? The, uh, it's not the, the Vericam. Um, it's slipping my mind with the, with the top of the line. Um, I think it's the, the new, the new Vericam, uh, Panasonic Vericam. Okay, here we go. Panasonic Vericam. Nice. So you look up Panasonic Vericam, and the first thing that comes up is is the GH4, right? Because uh, Vericam was released at at NAB um, this past year. What did I do? Spell it wrong here. Okay, let's go over to here. So this is like there's two configurations on this thing. Um, you have one recorder. You have uh, the the head here, which can either be the 4K head or the high speed head. Um, you've got a fixed focal uh, cinema lens, matte box. This viewfinder just by itself is like $6,000. And I had an F, a Sony F55 user who looked through this EVF, um, whereas the F55 viewfinder is more like a, like a $4,500 price point. Had a guy look through this EVF and he was like, that's the best EVF I've ever seen. So since this camera has that vlog on it that absolutely has to mean that vlog is going to be put on to a gh4 back to the post any word on the the vlog firmware update on the gh4 i'm not sure if it's actually even coming out haven't heard anything vlog discussion thread so this guy referred back to back to another page here um but then somebody comes in here, something big is coming. Yeah, the, uh, I don't know if anybody, if you remember the uh, Canon, um, what was it? The Canon on scene or the Canon on cover? What was it? Canon, um, impossible. The Canon, Canon, impossible. Where, where, where you see, where, where you see possible, we see impossible or something like that. And, Apologies for surfing the internet on an outdated version of Firefox on a on a G on a what is this on a Mac Pro from from 2006. But just look at some of the Canon C Impossible uh, stuff here because everybody's waiting on this, these big announcements from Canon and somebody explains the the campaign right here. Uh, but everybody's waiting. But what we actually find out that um, what we've been waiting for is a white author in the suburbs who can't publish a book so she prints her book on a on a canon printer and then what we see is a, another a white person somewhere else in suburbia who wants to be a filmmaker uh, but of course uh attends film school and uh, wins a film festival because of his use of a, uh, a Canon, uh, his use of a Canon camera. Um, so this is just a great um, uh, distracting corporate uh, wormhole uh, to run down. So, but this right here, even when talking to Canon employees at the time, they said, yep, it is the actual campaign. Uh, but what they didn't know is that there was this uh, kind of underground uh, uh a thread of discussion kind of happening that the point of it was uh, is Canon keeping up to current trends back over here here's vlog looks like something big is coming so let's see what what big is coming doesn't even have anything to do with Canon. I th well, let's see here. Is EOS HD, so that's Andrew Reed's website. Um, somebody says, looks like something's big is coming. So, of course, you're comparing a camera that streeted for 15000 with something that streets for 1500 So, you're comparing the two. So, you know, meanwhile, with my uh, apples and oranges. So, of course, I have a set of Cook, Pancro, you know, Prime sitting around to adapt over to uh, my Samsung uh, NX1 uh, camera. Um, so, then here, this guy wants raw video. Uh, uh, you know, on the camera. So here's 15,000 and curious to see, I don't know how something big is coming. This is fantastic. This is so worth your, 
three minutes and 41 seconds of time. Basically, it's a look at the DSLR revolution, which, of course, Canon spearheaded by flipping video on on the 5D. And I'd recommend uh, uh, taking a look at, at that video uh, right there. But trying to keep on the path here in terms of, you know, kind of what's current. Looks like lots of stuff is popping up from October of last year. And so here's the NEX, or sorry, the NX1 uh, from Samsung. Um, FS7, super popular camera. 4K camera um, from Sony. Uh <laughs> Is it Kaipon or is it Keepon? It keeps the lens on the camera. It is an adapter from Keepon, Kaipon. Um, B4 to PL adapter. Um, so what people are attempting to do here with these optics is basically put a broadcast lens on a PL mount camera. So here we have somebody who looks like they're selling it off. So I didn't log in. Um... So this looks like somebody, yeah, for sale optics. So again, uh, much like DV Info, um, there is the ability to buy and sell stuff here. Uh, why not use an AF100 for a feature? I don't know, because the GH2 looks cheaper. Um, uh, sorry, the GH2 looks sharper. Um, please give me your opinion why AF100 would not be good. Um might take a little more time and lighting to get a good image. Image may not be super sharp. Yeah, that's because there's an optical low pass that's built into that camera. So I'm the guy that took the AF100 and put a 14 to 140 on it and then took a GH2 and put a 14 to 140 on it. And then Panasonic asked me to remove the video from the internet. Uh, that was about five years ago. Um, but I had done that and posted the results all through here. So just Google me. It's a P-H-I-L-G-O-E-T-Z. Again, Phil Getz, G-O-E-T-Z. AF100 is great. I shot the promo video that we started out right here. Like, go to 3pointproduction.com. Like, this video right here was shot all 108060 on an AF100 with a variety of lenses. I think I had 12 to 35, 35 to 100. Had the Voigtlander 0.25 that I rented from Lens Baby because I wasn't able to actually go to my local camera provider to to rent that lens. So I know that where you spend your money and where you vote in terms of uh, video production and, and the film work that you're doing is based somewhat on convenience, but plan ahead so you can work your local camera shop into the into the transaction because you know you're going to meet people there. There's there's staffers there that are that are smart and helpful. Um, so wherever you're located in the world. So of course this guy, you know, somebody was talking about the AF100. So here you have dude that owns you know GH2. Uh, are you seeing this down here? Had to take a swig of coffee. That break was not sponsored by by Folgers. So Small HD, great company. Uh, was going to be getting in with the Vitek Group in terms of distribution. Um, Ronin M. Uh, Ronin's going to be a, the a smaller version of the of the the big one. Um, so Ronin started shipping uh, DJI product and FS. 700 won't fit on the original Ronin. So somebody says, well, if it doesn't fit on the original, can I fit it on something that's smaller? Um, oh, let's see here. Octava. Oh, the Octava Film Edition uh, shotgun mic, comparing it to, to a Sheps for years. And there's some, um, there's some mods that can be done uh, to really take that Film Edition mic. And uh, um, it's interesting because it's a, it's a, it's a condenser it's a condenser shotgun that's short body. Um, take a look at it sometime. Uh, the MK012. Then, of course, uh, order one from your local local camera shop. Um, the X, XC10. I'm wondering if any of these if any of these sold. So this is the new camera or newer camera um, from uh, from Canon. So it's 4K video and stills. You know, but the funny thing is about Red is Red's camera is a is like a, a DMC something, but it's like a, a digital and still production camera or something like that. Um, so, so this camera is of course, you know, attempting to do, uh, both things. So to shoot that 4k video, then also to, to do stills as well. Um, there's always time to say that the FS or sorry, that the, uh, a7s is great. Uh, so a7s is full frame, uh, camera from Sony. It's got gigantic pixels, excellent low light, uh, also shoots uh, 4k when you connect it to, uh, Atomos Shogun, 
or my evolving digital bolex so digital bolex is is out there um had a guy i wanted a local local price here so this looks like a super 16 um or no c mount uh, so here's c mount and then i think this is going to be somebody talking about screw mount um, but there's really a lot that you can go down in terms of what um different lenses people are, are putting on i, I once know some I, I know somebody who had collected an entire leica r series of glass to put on his uh his uh af 100 uh years ago um so here's cheap 10 millimeter lens it's like there was an advertising executive once that was working for for Calvin Klein, and he said, "You know, I want I want this to look cheap, and I don't care how much it costs me." So this is another aspect of you know shooting bad, shooting bad, uh, bad optics on on purpose. Like I was talking about lens baby before, and if you look at um, there's like lens cap lenses that are are fixed. Uh, these things are fixed focal, um, but you, for mirrorless. Uh, but it's actually like a, um, I don't know if it was a, there was an eight millimeter one. Um, but let me see if I can do this here real quick. MFT lens. Okay, so MFT lens and go low to high. This is this is a trip. Yeah, check this out. So this is an actual lens. It's a lens, 15 millimeter field of view. A uh, fixed focal, so there's no aperture. You can't change the aperture. Fifty bucks. Um, so here's some inexpensive stuff. Uh, it's body cap lens, uh, just to kind of get started with uh, with some glass here. Sorry, I bumped my zoom. What am I recording with here? This is a zoom. Um, it's not the H4n. It is. I've I've been slowly forgetting my model numbers of everything. Everything I use the the audio recorder that I just bumped when I scratched my nose here. Um, Zoom H two N. So this is an H two N. This is a recorder I'm recording to. So I'm able to you know have it probably about six inches uh, from my head. Um, I never activated Wave Lab for it, but that's what I'm recording to here. Digital Bolex. Interesting. One of the original. Um, uh, Kickstarter campaigns. Um, the, my favorite historical Kickstarter campaigns are going to be uh, Digital Bolex and then also uh, Synetics. Uh, Synetics started by uh, Justin Jensen. Uh, a couple of good things in terms of uh, getting people on board uh, with uh, your product uh, before it uh, before you start manufacturing it. So this guy waiting for the A7R2 versus A7 II now. GH4. So this is a great way to um, you know, talk about kind of all the different um, all the different cameras out there. So GH4 forum. Um, so there's only so much uh, you know sitting in an armchair and writing this stuff that you can possibly do before you 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 jump in and and do something. So H.265. So now H.264 is what everybody had had uh, been using. So it's as the as the codecs have been. Um, uh, progressing here um, to newer, faster, better. Um, let's maybe go one more, one more page deep here. So I think it's going to be a Nikon uh, D4 test footage. So people shooting video on the Nikon body, uh, C log doubts. Uh, so Canon log. We were talking before about shooting the regular codec, shooting log or shooting raw. So here's someone talking about that. Um, Let's go make fun of Black Magic for a little while. Um, that's always fun to do. Um, Black Magic. Let's see what's going on. It used to be that uh, it, I'd only sell Black Magic to people who were buying, you know, two pieces, uh, just because once somebody buys something from Black Magic from you, it's like if you sold them that piece, then you are responsible for every single problem that happens with anything that connects to it. And typically I was selling intensity pro cards to teenagers, mothers, whose kids wanted to record themselves playing video games. And the only thing worse than that was the time I sold a copy of Sorens and squeeze to a lawyer. Um, okay. Um, so here we go. That's the main, I don't know if that's Grant Petty or who that is kind of back there. So 
camera update for Ursa. Uh, so of course there's going to be an update for a camera that nobody wanted, nobody bought. It's got the flip out, you know, screen here. Um, they're fooling around with CFast cards and CFast 2 raw recording. So people have been waiting around for the Ursa Mini. Uh, people have been waiting around for the the Ursa. Um, what's the word? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. People have been waiting around for the the Ursa B4 mount. So you could put uh, the broadcast lenses on this here. Um, so same as it ever was. I mean, you know, Blackmagic production camera 4K was good. Uh, they've got their studio camera that's got fiber out on it, but it's got a Super 16 sensor. It's like 3X crop. And here's the Ursa Mini right up here. And of course you got, you know, dude with a, uh, what I can even, I can almost tell what kind of camera that is here. I don't know. It looked like looked like one of the one of the cannons for a second here, but you know we're st we're still stuck on NAB. You know, twenty fifteen. I mean, I haven't looked at any of this stuff since you know for about a month now. Um, but uh, doesn't look like anything's been updated. Um, congrats to uh, uh, Ron Ayers from Crocial, uh, kind of keeping those products on uh, in here, and then the uh, the Xenon here, um, which is going to be a, a, a Schneider Cinema style lens. Um, Yep, like Magic Ursa Mini. Um, whenever that comes out, this is weird. Now the word mezzanine, mezzanine is back in. So as as Final Cut Pro died uh, uh, with transcoding everything to ProRes to have a mezzanine codec, now all of a sudden there's something shipping now from Black Magic that's a mezzanine card. So what do you do then? I mean, do you have your, you know, 12 G, which is, you know, pushing the limit of what you can put over one SDI cable, but it doesn't make engineering sense, but they're still going to do it. But, but I'd be really interested if someone can, you know, put a comment on this uh, video and say what in the world they mean by, uh, uh, mezzanine here. Um, so yeah, here's the, the kind of limits. It's just like we had, you know, dual link, you know, there's dual link and there's like, oh, no longer dual link. Let's just put it on one. And then you get over here to start doing, oh, we can do, you know, 30p. And I was like, wait a second. I remember 30p when it was called 1080 six years ago and all the sports people wanted to do 720, 60. So when's the 60 going to come in? And then Panasonic said, oh, we're 1080, 60. And oh, it's on a consumer camera. And oh, how come my AF100 can't do it? Or my Vericam, why can't my Vericam do 108060? And, you know, people just got done paying off those cameras. And now, now that magic number is at 60. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what kind of happens because a 60 gets smoother motion and that's what Mark Cuban wants. And it used to be like a, like a 19 uh, megabit per second, um, you know, kind of, uh, a bottleneck in HDNet. Um, but this stuff's always interesting to kind of, um, you know, take a look at, but where, you know, my particular skills in terms of, of consulting and, and workflow, uh, uh break down in terms of, of using these, um, using these different products. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of hard to get from, you know, a phone call when someone's trying to put something together to a, a panacea, like we see in, this shot right here where someone is using an older laptop because what you can put a card in it and they don't have the new Mac Pro with a um, I can't remember the name of the uh, outboard Thunderbolt expansion chassis to put this card into and then you know your colorist is like sitting over here or something and but you can't really see you know where their keyboard is so this is always kind of you know what the goal is in terms of using this equipment um, but the reality is you know typically you know screaming gnashing of teeth uh, failed boards um, so I guess that's why they kind of call it uh, why they call it advertising um, so I guess this is showing you know this is you know PC based over here but I want to see if I can find here so here's products um, I want to go back into some of the cameras. Okay, so here you go, Black Mer Okay, so here's the Ursa Mini. Um, again, this thing was just a you know boat anchor. Nobody bought it. This one they marked it down to two ninety nine, and they sold like ninety eight hundred cameras in like two hours. And this one comes with DaVinci Resolve, so that's great. Um, and then on the this is the the studio camera because of course, when you're in a studio and you have a studio camera, the main things you want are audio input. Because you have a switcher. So if you have a switcher and you're running audio to a mixer that's connected to your recorder, you're of course going to want to record audio on your camera, 
right? And also, you're going to want to have your camera have a battery in it because when you're in a studio, you typically don't have access to 120 volts to power the camera, right? Y'all should be be laughing right now because I'm, I'm, I'm totally on a roll. That's funny. Um, but I don't know if they took the picture down, but there was this great picture of um, with, that, with that studio camera because it uses fiber of a gentleman carrying a roll of fiber uh, that I would guess that roll of fiber probably weighs about 150 pounds and he's carrying it with two hands. Um, I've got a photo around somewhere where I, where I took of that, which is again, extremely, uh, uh, illogical, but you know, to black magic's credit, I mean, the TV studio in a box, I mean, TV studio in a box, just they've gone so far with it. And it seemed like every year there's a better TV studio in a box and then it was one rack unit and with multi-view built in. I mean, there's so many things that Blackmagic has done um, that have been um, extremely, extremely impressive. Um, I don't know if there's any other uh, uh, manufacturers that I want to want to check in with and, and kind of see. Um, but might just pop back over here one more time. We had looked at uh, lenses for a while. We had looked at some of the, I don't think I was able to at the beginning sort uh, the consumer uh, cameras uh, by, if I was able to, to, to sort the, com- the consumer cameras by new, um, because what I want to do that for new releases is just kind of see what filter by... Yeah, they don't say anything here about, you know, getting the, you know, just being able to see the sort by uh, best sellers. I mean, maybe I can go down and type in the word new. Let's see here. Yeah, so there's no way to sort that there, but let's go back. Let's go to pro video. Okay. And shout out your favorite uh, local camera shops uh, in... um, in the responses uh, or in the comments on this uh, video here, so so folks know uh, kind of where you are and and where you can shop and and give the fine folks there a give them a week to to get some stuff in because I know you know just clicking add to cart by now is, is so rewarding and gratifying but but spend your money locally. Um, see now I'm on professional camcorders. Okay, so here we go. So a reboot of the C100. Um, definitely, if you're interested in, in, in these cameras, uh, check out uh, Joe Simon. Uh, Joe Simon and the Delivery Men, uh, people right here in Austin, Texas, uh, where I am. Uh, they recently shot a, uh, a Ringer film um, on C100. Uh, it's called Fragments. Uh, so check out Fragments. There's some neat stuff uh, kind of behind the scenes. Um, so here's Ursa Mini. Um, new item, coming never. Uh, yeah, so end of July. So we'll kind of, kind of watch what happens, um, with that there, uh, again here, C100, but that's with a kit lens. So $500 more, um, and you get a lens that I think streets for about 1400, uh, but then people sell them on, you know, eBay and whatnot, um, you know, for six, 700, again, that, uh, 24 to 105, um, this is the, uh, JVC, um, is, uh, they've got their 4k camera, uh, here, uh, records to one card, not to be confused with their HQ 10 that recorded to four cards, uh, at the same time. Um, so this is, uh, this is something, something different here. So 4k camcorder, single half inch chip, uh, up to 150 megabit per second. So this 150 megabit per second bottleneck is the same bottleneck for recording that you'll see on that FZ 1000. So the Panic FZ, so the Panasonic FZ 1000 thousand that we talked about uh, a little bit earlier um, we talked about this camera uh, XC 10 uh, 4k so this is going to be it's got a built-in lens uh, from Canon uh, records video um, also uh, shoot stills you want to look at what the the megapixel um, what you're looking at in terms of megapixels on it um, now note the aperture range is a little bit wacky um, so that 2.8 to 5.6 that's the same thing that had been seen on uh, JVC's first, uh, 4k camera, um, which I actually sold one of these, um, to, uh, NASA. And I was very happy about that. And, and one of my buddies was like, why would you waste taxpayer money? And I'm like, whatever's, um, so it was this camera, the HMQ 10. And this was, 
at a time when this came out, like four years ago, five years ago, 4K was red. It is 4K. It is the best. It is red. And, and this camera came out with a single chip. And the thing about it, though, is the aperture range. Like, people were looking at it here, and they were like, well, how come the aperture range is 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 what it is um which it doesn't really say what it is but you can probably research a little bit more and find out uh, uh what exactly um you know what exactly that range is um but the reason it's not that great is because it's a half inch sensor so what that means is that it it's a bigger sensor so the lens won't be as as flexible in terms of uh, the the range, so the f stops on this are two point eight to four point five. That's almost like fixed aperture. Um, so then you would need to adjust your exposure by changing the light in the scene, or by using some physically light. So changing um, if you got a, a light kit and you've got some lights on your shoot to change the amount of light that way, uh, or to take a, a fader filter or something like that to to adjust um, to adjust the amount of light that's hitting hitting the sensor. So that is the HMQ10. So fast forward to to where we are to where we are right now, and. So how is this any different than where JVC was, you know, four years ago? I mean, yeah, it shoots stills. It's a one-inch sensor, so it's physically a bigger sensor. Um, it, it, is it going to shoot more than 150 uh, megabit per second? Um, you know, we just saw that JVC camera that shoots, that shot at like 144 megabit per second. So here you go, 305 and in terms of the cards that they're using, um, the 1DC uh, from Canon, the 4K DSLR, introduced a new realm of compact flash cards that needed to be a certain speed for recording on that camera. But here we're in the CFast world. And of course, uh, all of you people that have the Area Mira, uh, they're listening to this, which is, you know, like zero of you, uh, will know that um, that CFast is the same media used in that camera. So CFast 1.0 is mainly used on the Ninja Star uh, from uh, Atomos. I think that's the most popular uh, product that used that. Um, I had the opportunity to sell uh, an, an LS300 uh, in the past. So Micro Four Thirds camera, it's got some interesting stuff in terms of variable mapping, in terms of what kind of lens you put on it and what kind of crop the sensor can do uh, to kind of match up to that. That. So uh, super, super 35 sensor, um, ultra HD, a couple different record rates here. So excellent little camera here. Um, so I don't know, some of the people who had been um, AF100 uh, fans might want to uh, uh, jump over and kind of take a look at this because it's using all the same lenses, uh, but more updated technology um, in the camera. And then that 4K output, you can uh, run that to uh, the Atomos, what is it? Atomos Shogun or the Odyssey 7Q, uh, some of the 4K recorders for, for grabbing that. I don't know if it's 8-bit HDMI or if it's 10-bit HDMI, but that will affect whether you set your recorder to ProRes or ProRes HQ. Um, so scroll through here a little bit and see onboard, um, a couple media slots, SDXC. Uh, but in terms of of what the data rate is. I'm not sure exactly what the data rate is going to be here. Um, so at least at 1080, doing 50 megabits per second. But I'd be interested to see what the um, what the 4K uh, ceiling is. And I'm guessing it is going to be 150 megabits per second, which is the same as the FC1000 uh, that we were talking about before. So there's these, there's these kind of like fences in uh in technology that are just kind of like these gigantically broad brush strokes brush brush strokes of what works with what what doesn't work with what and it's always interesting for me to see i mean i haven't i haven't looked through i haven't been on bnh dvx user or dv info for for over a month um and bnh photo video is now a dealer of the digital bolex and it's new. It's so funny that it's like, it, it's new to them, you know, and it's like other people have been selling this for a long time. This thing's been shipping for a long time, but look, new. Um, Cinema DNG, interesting, uh, formed by Adobe. Ah, Adobe. In 2008, Consortium uh, put together kind of the, um, what is this, Cinema DNG. Is that, now I'm second guessing myself to remember 
what that term meant. So it, it's raw, but it's a different, a different way of doing raw or a different kind of raw. And of course, being on my, being on my Mac, Mac here can't get my, my keyboard shortcuts doing anything uh, good for me. But Cinema DNG, we're waiting for that to get turned on. On I think the Shogun is going to get turned on. Um, what is it? Open file format, DNG. It's not going to say what supports stereoscopic. Digital negative. Yeah. So it's different from the digital negative. Okay, so each Cinema DNG image is encoded. Uh, image stream can then be stored one of two formats, either as video in essence, uh, using frame-based wrapping, MXF file, or a sequence of DNG image files in a specific directory. So that's how you get the, the workflow to actually be read uh, by your edit system, whether it's Premiere, Final Cut X, or uh, Vegas. Not even gonna, not even gonna attempt to talk about uh, um, where Vegas is at or what Vegas is doing. Um, so this camera, of course, well, we were talking about this one, but at any rate, this camera comes with the the cheap uh, shotgun mic that you can break in half with with one hand, with two hands if you choose to. Um, PL mount not so popular in terms of a C300. Uh, most people put EF glass on that. And uh, for some of the big dogs, some of the big big productions, um, uh, what we see is that. Folks will use EF glass, so Canon EF glass, uh, for their um, run-of-the-mill shoots for stuff that's going to uh, 1080, stuff that's going to the web. Um, but when they have a, a serious production, they'll go ahead and rent um, the cinema lenses uh, to use with cameras. And the cinema lenses, like from Zeiss, can have that EF back to it or PL back to it. But when you just go with a camera that's straight up PL from the get-go, um, you're pretty serious in terms of uh, what lenses you're using. I know one person who recently got the uh, the Sony FS7, and with that FS7, they have two lenses. They're using a they have a PL mount, so an EF to PL that's from wooden camera that mounts to the top of the FS7. And we'll go take a look at that uh, uh, in a second here. Um, but the two lenses he has is the red, I think it's an 18 to 55, and then an 85 PL Zeiss Prime, compact prime. And that's all he uses for everything he does. So we'll just keep scrolling through here and blah, blah. More configurations, the digital Bolex. So so kudos to L and uh, Joe Rubenstein on getting that camera out there. Uh, and as I had said that uh, um, the DVX, DVX user was kind of a bad name on uh, DVX 100 camera 10 years ago was the first 24P camera recording to DV tape. The DVX 200 was announced at NAB, and that is kind of bucking a trend where the Panasonic part numbers had always referred to specs of the camera or different things in the camera that can define something about it. But DVX100 really didn't say anything about the camera. So this is going back to what Panasonic had done before, kind of bringing that name back. I mean, so so DVX100 in the, the film and video world kind of has the ca cachet of being called a like a Camaro or something like that. So when you see that DVX, so now to have the DVX200, I think that there's going to be a little bit of... Um, a little bit of a cult following, uh, not occult, a c u l t, a cult following um, to this camera here. Now, this one I've never seen before, so this is my first time seeing this. If this is your first time seeing this, then we're seeing this both together for the first time. Looks like a fixed lens camera from Sony. Uh, looks like it's using a uh, one inch sensor. Uh, it does 1080, uh, 12x on the zoom. Uh, there is 50 megabit per second on that XABC S. Don't know if they put S log gamma into it. It's got XLR inputs. Um, so kind of going up against the X70. Uh, um, and one of the questions kind of with, with Sony is just how they're able to, to put so many products on the market. So, so many products in terms of different options, uh, uh, that people have in terms of recording. So what is it about this camera that, that makes it outstanding? Maybe once we see the price point, I mean, I, it, it does have XLR audio. And that was one thing that had always been, um, had put something in the broadcast realm as opposed to the, the consumer uh, consumer or photo uh, world. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what um, 
you know what the what the hooks are with this one. I mean, maybe the maybe it's fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, that's what what could happen. I mean, but but nothing is you know kind of announced in terms of uh, you know how much it is. So maybe they cut corners with there's no shotgun with it. Uh, doesn't come with a battery charger, um, and and those are the kind of things that that bring that initial price point down. Um, that could turn into you know gotchas in the end for somebody who isn't you know really looking or thinking. It also has the um, looks like it's got the HDSDI out uh, headphone jack here, a couple slots. So looks like it could be another uh, solid contender. Um, if you want to take a look at one of the big fences that Sony jumped over, it was the NX5U, uh, the HXR NX5U. Um, that camera about five years ago is when Sony had a pro camera that was not using uh, proprietary media. And the PMW 320 may be gone because here's the PXW uh, uh, 320. So a new new camera from Sony there. Well, if you have any questions, uh, uh, my contact info is kind of here uh, on Twitter. I am at p h i l i p g o e t z at Phil Getz. And put any comments in here. I'll try to answer stuff as as time permits. And I may at some point be uh, back on the forums uh, commenting uh, and talking on DVX user and DV info. Uh, one thing about DV info is it is a real names forum. Uh, so if you sign up there, you got to use your actual name. Uh, but then on DVX user, you can create kind of any handle you want film guy, film gal, video guy, video gal, uh, whatever you kind of want on there. Thanks for listening. Have a great day out there. And don't forget to. To support your local, your local camera camera shop. Let me see if I can find a camera shop here in Austin. Hmm. Hmm. Here in Austin, Omega Broadcast Group. Ah. Oh. Hmm. This looks like a good one here. Oh my goodness! I have Flickr page here. What in the world can possibly pop up on their Flickr? Oh, looks like a nice showroom. Very nice, very nice. Looks like some pictures of some birds here. Oh, looks like, huh, a lot of stuff we talked about. Huh, A7R, South by Southwest. But last but not least, don't be boring. That's Converse.